One planet. Oh, okay, let's again. Oh, two. Okay. Okay. Second. Okay. One planet. 195 countries. Around 55,000 cities. 7.7 .7 billion people. Conclusion: You're insignificant, or so the world tells you. In fact, the society tells us a lot of stuff, which on itself isn't isn't such a bad thing. But unfortunately, people instead of working hand in hand to find motives and rise and work together, we hear a lot more negative and discouraging things that it makes us really uncomfortable, that it makes us let go of a lot of our dreams, instead of the society working hand in hand in order to support us, to encourage us. So I'm going to ask you like a couple questions, and then I won't, I'd like for you to raise your hands if this applies to you. How many of you, how many of you maybe uh, started working or, did, or went into a certain field that's not something they're into, that's not something they're into, but you did it just due to the society's outlook, not because of your grades, like in university, not because of uh, how you're applying things, but just because of the society's outlook. Okay, uh, how many of you maybe started learning something new? Can you guys hear me like this? Okay, how many of you started learning something new? That's started learning something new? Sorry for that. <laughs> how many of you started learning something new? that you're really, really passionate about and then quit halfway. Or maybe didn't even start just because those around you discouraged you, told you it's not going to be good enough, or told you that you won't be able to do it. See, that is a large number of people who were perfectly able to pursue something they wanted but didn't just because of how the society talks to them or what the society tries to instill into their minds. And all of us experience this on different levels wherever we go. People around us try to dictate how we live our lives and try to tell us what we should pursue in order to be successful instead of telling us to pursue our dreams, to find our personal growth, to find what is, what is it that we really, really want out of this life. And unfortunately, our community in particular has grown to become so negative and so discouraging a lot of bad habits and bad behavior are spreading way too fast in our community, like aggression, bullying, hate, envy, disrespecting your elders and disrespecting your parents. And it's going way too fast without us really noticing it. And even more serious things like smoking, doing drugs, uh, depression. In fact, as of 2019, amongst the Egyptian population, 20% are smokers. 60% of which are between the ages of 15 to 24, which is considered to be a very young average for the majority to be part of. And not to mention that half of the smokers also do other drugs. 5% of our population suffer from depression. 15% of them end up committing suicide. Now, laying down all of these facts and figures and like, Describing the community in such a negative light doesn't mean that the situation is so bleak or that there's nothing good about our community. I came here to highlight the negatives as some sort of wake-up call. A call for us to improve the situation. And by us, I mean youth, I mean teens, I mean adults. Because when we think about changing the world, we don't really think about the effect of us as individuals. The first thing that comes to mind as big moves and organizations and all of those really inspiring things. And there's no doubt that they play such an important role, but at the end, we should remember that these organizations, these moves, didn't start this big. They started from people, just like us, people with vision, people who started small, worked hard and cooperated together in order to reach where they are, where they can have such a big, noticeable impact. Yet, what I'm saying is not that all of us should strive to create moves and organizations, but what I'm trying to talk about today is exploring the idea that maybe we can have an even more of an impact from our current positions. And what I'm dubbing this as is the ripple effect. The analogy is really simple. So if you take a stone and throw it into a river, ripples are going to be created. And 
Theoretically, if I want to take these ripples further, all I have to do is throw stones further and further. Now here, the river represents our society with its own flow. The stones represent our words and actions. And the ripples represent the range of effect. How many people are you able to reach through your stones, through your actions? Now, the society is really contagious, and everywhere we go, we pick up things and habits and beliefs from all around us. Now, people are social beings, which is why from a very, very young age, we start learning things from our parents, from our friends, from our role models, from anything we expose ourselves to online, wherever we go. So if the things surrounding you are negative, it's going to be really hard to push all that away and hold on to what you believe to be right and hold on to what you're really trying to pursue because it's always much easier to adapt and go with the flow. So I'm going to give you a very minor yet common example that all of us have seen or fallen into at some point to make the idea more clear. So let's say you're having a good time hanging out with your friends, perhaps, and you're having some snacks. So you finish whatever it is you're eating, maybe glance around you, check if there are any nearby trash bins. You don't find any, so what you do is throw your wrappers onto the ground. Probably no one would look twice, no one is going to call you out on it, because we started perceiving this to be the common notion, the norm of our society which is probably why our streets are so full of litter. And there's always the argument that it's not my fault. Uh, I didn't find any trash bins, what am I supposed to do? Which is true, there are nearly not enough trash bins wherever we go, but that still doesn't justify a wrong action, especially that we think, when we think about it, we are the ones who get affected at the end. It looks displeasing to us, it smells disgusting to us, it spreads diseases among us, and it destroys our environment. So it's clear that we shouldn't litter from the very beginning. We're not going to have any negative impact in that way. Now you might ask, what does this have to do with changing the world? The idea is, if you develop a good habit, in this case, not littering, so when you're going out somewhere and you don't find a nearby trash can, all you do is hold on to your wrappers or stuff them into your bag or a plastic bag, whatever, until you reach a place where you can properly dispose of them. Some people will think you're silly. Some people will think you're exaggerating. They'll tell you, what's the problem? It's just a piece of paper. But you could actually inspire someone to do something without you even knowing it. You could literally inspire a stranger to take on a certain belief, to start doing a certain action, to develop a certain habit, Without you knowing it, it could be a complete stranger, and they learn this thing from you. They start implementing it in their own life, and go maybe amongst a different group of people, do the same thing they learn from you, and inspire another person in that group, and so on. That person will go amongst other groups of people and do the same thing. It's like some sort of chain reaction that you created without even knowing it. Now, the problem with this is that it goes both ways, which is why the problem arises here. If you're doing a positive thing, you can inspire people and you can impact people. At the same time, if you're doing negative things, if you're spreading negative habits, you're still going to impact people around you. So I'm not saying it's going to be easy to always be conscious of what you're doing or what you're saying, because it's not going to be easy. As I said, it is hard to go against a certain flow. You're going to slip, you're going to make mistakes yourself, but that's totally fine, it's, it's all right. All you have to do is to try to be conscious most of the time of the words you say and the actions you do in order to ensure that the impact you're leaving is some way ch changing to the world to the better. Uh, how many of you watched the movie Pay It Forward? Okay, so we have a group there. <laughs> okay, the, the idea of the movie is really simple. It was this social studies teacher who went to a class and he goes first day, a class of kids, and stands in the middle and goes like, I'm going to give you bonus marks if you find a way to change the world. So this kid takes, takes him really seriously and starts fracking his mind to find an idea to change the world. So what he comes up with 
is asking any per every person to help someone, just one person, like three people. And instead of asking them for payment, all they have to do is ask each of those three people to help three others. And it goes on, the effect multiplies. So he puts his all into helping three people, and then he waits, waits for the results, waits to see the world somewhat changing. When he doesn't see anything, he gets really, really discouraged and starts thinking that his idea is a failure. While simultaneously, during the movie, there was this journalist who was tracking big incidents of help around the United States, where people help people with really big things and don't ask for payment. All they get is help three other people, just help pay this forward. And he goes until he reaches the kid and finds him, and he tells him how he's been roaming the country for months to find who is the person who initiated this idea. And the whole movie was really inspiring. There is actually a pay it forward day on the 28th of April, where people are encouraged to do anonymous acts of help. Another person called James Back did a TED talk about this, and it was called Surf Bliss, Pay It Forward. Now what this person did was really crazy. He, on his birthday, he gave away all of his properties. Not sold, but gave away all of his properties and kept just the essentials for him to go around the United States to help one person or one family in each state. And he really did this, documented it with footage and videos where he shows it in his TED talk and finished his journey in, in like a full year. The idea of his talk was really inspiring because he was discussing that serving people is the way for attaining bliss and happiness. Helping someone, not littering, encouraging someone, complimenting someone, or maybe helping an old person carry their groceries across the street, pursuing your own dreams, spreading positivity, or even just smiling at people. All of these small actions can go a long way and have a huge impact, even if you don't know it. And frankly, you don't really need to know the impact you made. All you have to do is do what's right and be positive for yourself. And unknowingly, you're going to impact someone somewhere and help change the world just a little bit for the better. Today, I'm going to say that it's an undebatable fact that we are leaving some form of impact in the society, wherever we go. So let's take on the responsibility to ensure that what we're leaving is a positive impact, that what we're spreading is right, and what we're spreading is ethical, and something that helps improve the world, improve our future. I've chosen to give this talk from a TEDx platform in order to reach a large number of people. Today, this is a stone of mine that I'm throwing, and I'm hoping that you guys can spread this further. Today's theme is Dare To, so I'll end this talk daring all of you, myself included, to go against the flow, to do what's right and hold on to what really matters, and finally, to be ourselves in a world that demands us be anything but. Thank you.